Hi guys, Jen here with How Jen Does It. Today I am sharing how I organize my recipes and meal plan. I have been using this system for well over 10 years now and it works so well for me. I love to cook and make up recipes, so I have a lot of recipes, so I've had to add to it, but it's been such a great system, so I'm excited to share it with you today. I am collabing with Samantha from Happily a Housewife today, and she is going to show you how she organizes her recipes. If you aren't familiar with Samantha, you'll definitely want to check out her channel. I think that she is a very relatable mom, especially if you have younger children. Her youngest is in preschool, and then she has two children in elementary school. She is a busy baseball mom. She is just so real and relatable. I think you will love her carpool chats. She does vlogs where she shares what she does either that day or that week and I think you will really enjoy her, so definitely check her out. I'll leave a link to her recipe organization video in the description box below. If you are coming over from Samantha's channel, welcome. I am so glad that you took the time to stop by my channel. I'm Jen. I would love for you to stick around and subscribe to my channel. Okay, I am going to show you how I organize my recipes and how I meal plan. I have all of my recipes organized in these two binders. What I really like about this system is it's very affordable. You don't have to spend a lot of money or buy a lot of things to organize your recipes. A very simple binder that's inexpensive can work really well for you and that is what I used years ago when I started collecting recipes. I do like the binders that I have. They are a little more heavy duty. I started out with one and I had all of my recipes in there. But like I mentioned at the beginning, I love to cook and make recipes. So I have a lot. So now I have two. It was getting a little hard to turn the pages with just one binder, but one binder might work great for you. So I just label them on the side. There is a little slot to put a label in. In this first binder, I have my menu, which I'll show you in just a second. And then I have all of my dinner recipes. So I made these tags. So this first one said it's menu. The second says dinner ideas. And I'll show you that in just a second. And then I have bread and roll recipes, sauces, dips, dressings, side dishes, salad, soup, meatless, beef, chicken, pork, pizza, seafood. And I will list all of my tab names in the description box just so I don't take too much time in case you want to make something similar that will be easy for you to find. So that way I can find things easily even though I have a lot of recipes. My second binder has breakfast, appetizer, and dessert. So my tabs are breakfast, sweetbreads, muffins, scones, appetizers, cookies, brownies, snacks, and desserts. And that way it's a lot easier to find by dividing them instead of just having all desserts, so cookies, brownies, everything were in one tab. It just made it easier for me. But you can definitely label however you like and whatever will work well for you. I wanted to show you how I made the dividers because if you buy regular dividers, they aren't going to stick out like this. I believe they do have some available that are extended that will stick out. I already had a whole large set of dividers, so I just used these and made my own sheets and it was very easy. So I have clear sheet protectors. I put a white piece of cardstock inside. I cut out the little tab and put that on there. And then I made the labels with my label maker. Nothing fancy, but it's super easy and it's been holding up really well. I have no problem finding my recipes. So behind each of the tabs, I will have the recipes in alphabetical order. So I'll have my awesome baked chicken, and that recipe's on my channel, baked barbecue chicken, that's a blue apron recipe, bang bang chicken, and so on. And 
They're just in alphabetical order and it makes it so easy to find them. When I first started organizing my recipes like this years ago, I didn't have an enormous amount of recipes, but it still took a while and I typed out all of my recipes so that everything would look the same. But over time, I realized that takes a long time and it's so much easier just to print off a recipe if it's from the internet or if it's one of my recipes, I can type it out. This is one of my recipes, so I typed it out. This recipe is on my channel. But if I get a recipe from Blue Apron, for example, I'll just put the recipe right in a sheet protector and it is fine. I don't want to have to type this out and I love the way that it has pictures and everything. And also if I find a recipe on the internet that I really like or want to try, I will go ahead and just print it off and put it in here. There is no reason unless you want to to type it all out you can use the same system if you have recipes on index cards they do make sheet protectors with a divider in the center so you can put two index cards or if you have a um, written recipe from someone and you just want to put it in there you can do that you can secure it to a piece of cardstock so if you've clipped it from a magazine you can just uh, secure a couple per page on a piece of white cardstock then that makes it so much easier and that way you can quickly organize your recipes instead of feeling like you have to type all of them out and like I said I've been doing this for years and years and it works so well and I can easily find the recipes that I need in the front of my recipe binder, I keep my menu. So I have a tab that says menu. I have a piece of white cardstock behind this just to keep it secure because it's the first page, it gets touched a lot and that way this will stay neat in here. And I do my meal planning for two weeks. So I will put my menu in here you can put it on your refrigerator you can put it on a chalkboard or wherever i usually just keep it in here because i don't meal plan for specific day i just have however many meals i need usually it's 14 or 15 depending on the day that i'm going to go to the grocery store if there's a holiday or a reason we have to go an extra day like this time it was 15. so i will just write out 14 to 15 recipes and then pick them that day uh, so I just keep my menu right in here with my recipes so that if I'm going to make um, meatball calzones I have what I'm going to make and I have the recipe that I can find in this book makes it really easy and I'll talk a little bit more about how I use this to meal plan after that, I have this dinner ideas, and again, it's in a clear sheet with a piece of the white cardstock. And I have all of my dinners. I have them divided by meat, and I do have meatless in here as well. I keep this on my computer, and that way, after a while, if I have a lot more recipes that I would like to add, I can just do it and then reprint this. This is really helpful for meal planning. You can do it however you want. You can just write out all the meals that you make. You might want to have 30 or 31, so you have one for each day of the month and do it on a rotation. I love to cook and cooking is part of my channel, so I have a lot. I have way more than 30 or 31. So I have mine divided by the meat. So I start with ground beef. I have all of my recipes or dinner ideas. Some I don't need a recipe for, like tacos. But I just have the ideas here because sometimes it feels like even though we have tons of recipes, we are making the same thing. And then I have beef. So this would be um, like Mongolian beef, steak fajitas, Swiss steak, things like that in there. Then I have bacon, sausage, and other. So other would be like Canadian bacon, or something along those lines. So I just have different ideas. Seafood, 
meatless chicken. I have a whole lot of chicken and then pork. So that just gives me some ideas when I am meal planning and I will often look over this list of dinner ideas to figure out what I want to make. Also, if you shop sales and you want to find some inspiration for ground beef, you have a good sale on ground beef, then you have all of your ground beef recipes listed so that way you can remember to get the other ingredients for those meals. It just really, really helps. So when I meal plan for two weeks, like I mentioned, I'll just write down however many dinners I need. If we're going out, I'll just put that on there, uh, Valentine's Day, and then make your oni. That's what we call it when you are making your own dinner and just so you know, I have teenagers, so they are able to make their own. Sometimes it ends up being leftovers or what have you, but that just works out. So I will just list different meals. I don't put them in any particular order. They're as I think of them, and they won't be in the order that we're going to eat them. So we aren't having like chicken <laughs> day after day after day. I try to do slow cooker meals on Sunday, so when I meal plan, I will make sure I have two slow cooker meals that don't need a whole lot of extra attention once they're done cooking because you know some of those slow cooker meals you have to do a lot and you have to be home, but we're coming home from church, so I want it pretty much ready, so I keep that in mind. Also, when meal planning, you want to look at your calendar, obviously, like I did, and jot down any times that you're going to be away. If you are a busy mom with sports and what have you, or you have meetings in the evening or whatever, that will be on your calendar, and you'll know that you need however many really easy meals, or be sure that some of your meals are really easy because you might not want to make complicated meals every single night. And then some, if you like to cook or you like to spend more time in the kitchen on the weekends, then you can have a few of those as well. So that works out really well for when I am meal planning. When I go to write my grocery list, I have my menu and then I can find any recipes that I need. So if I'm not really sure um, if I can't remember how much vegetable stock, for example, I need for my minestrone soup, I can just find the recipe in the soup and then find the minestrone recipe and be able to find it really well, add it to my grocery list, and we're good to go. So that is basically how I organize my recipes. They're very, very easy to organize, very easy to find everything I need. I like having everything together for when I plan my menu. Thank you so much for watching, guys. I hope you enjoyed this video and found it helpful. Don't forget to check out Samantha's video. And again, that will be linked in the description box below. And if you aren't subscribed to my channel, I would love to have you subscribe. And if you enjoyed this video, be sure to give it a thumbs up.